among practicing Christian <laughs> clergy, they are anything but. So, <coughs> yeah. so the question is, is there any connection between biblical scholars and biblical practitioners? <laughs> well, yes, of course. Uh, uh, so David Fitzgerald wrote a book, a series of books, a volume, three volume set called Mything in Action. And in one of them, I think volume one, he actually shows a study. He got a team of people together and actually went around to like a thousand universities and asked, uh, do you have a faith requirement uh, to be a professor there? So in other words, uh, do you have to like swear to a creed? And then if you, if you violate... Uh, if, you, if you disagree with that, that creed, and the creeds are often detailed and have specific things like the Bible is literally true and inerrant, uh, and they have to actually sign uh, in blood to the devil, I guess, uh, to never go against that statement or else they get fired. Uh, so they went around and said, like, how many schools have this? Uh, and they found some schools would outright admit, yes, we have it. Uh, some schools were shady and said we didn't, and then they found out they actually did. Uh, so they even know that it's shady to have it, so they're trying to lie about it. Good Christians that they are. Um, and then they actually got a ratio. They figured out how many biblical studies departments have these faith requirements in them, uh, which actually means if you're going to sign a faith requirement, you are no longer an objective scholar. You are writing yourself out of being counted among the consensus of experts because you're basically saying, I will never, ever, under any circumstances, agree to any evidence that contradicts this view. So you're actually signing away your academic freedom. So people who do that, scholars who do that, we can't count their opinion anymore because their jobs depend on holding a position uh, on this issue that may be counter the facts or the truth. Uh, so that's, uh, that's the side of that. Uh, now there are also some, there are secular scholars, there are scholars who are not under those faith re uh, restrictions. Uh, there are liberal Christian scholars, even conservative Christian scholars that are not under those faith restrictions. So it is, it's difficult also to figure out what consensus you should look at. But when we say mainstream consensus, we mean not fundamentalist. Uh, so anyone who is basically acting like or actually has sworn to treat the Bible as inerrant and, uh, and um, literally true, uh, or anything close to that, we're excluding them, because they're, they're actually not actually objective speakers on this subject. So you look at the re who's left, and you say those experts, and say, what's, what's the consensus among people them? people who are not academic. Uh, or what's passing peer review from them in the mainstream literature, which is, again, not the fundamentalist literature, but the actual academic literature uh, that's highly respected. Uh, and so that's what we mean by uh, the mainstream scholar consensus versus uh, these, uh, you know, Bible practitioners who are also pretending to be Bible scholars. I mean, they are Bible scholars, but they're sold their soul to being a Bible practitioner first. So. <laughs>